that's Matt here from pilot practice exams let's just take a little bit of an overview of uh, echo loading chart so that you understand the maths behind the forward limits and this will allow you to cross check whether you're getting things correct or incorrect so if we flick over and just take a look at the aircraft for a sec so we can put this diagram from the uh, work booklet in context what we'll notice here is here's the forward limit on the aircraft so in other words if we've got a forward limit of 2400 millimeters what that means is is that the center of gravity runs through that line in other words the datum is up here and 2400 millimeters behind the datum runs along there and that's where our center of gravity would be around about there assuming we loaded the same on both sides our center of gravity would be around about there when our uh, forward limit is 2400 millimeters and as we load the aircraft we start you know by loading these tanks and later on we load these tanks and we add more passengers and we add more cargo and we keep adding weight and what tends to happen is the weight tends to shift back and back and back now we have the aft limit is 2680 in other words if you ever go back here the aircraft is unsafe to fly and as long as we remain in front of that 2680 millimeters aft limit then we need to be somewhere between 2400 and 2560. Now, if we're light, in other words, if we're under 2360 kilos, and that's all in the in the work booklet, we need to be on. We need to be behind this forward limit of 2400. However, once we reach 2360, the forward limit starts to slope back. Back. We we're going to be as we get heavier if we're um, at 2400 millimeters it's telling us that we're two nose heavy so the front line starts to slope back and, and that's it sloping back there so what do i mean by that well let's go and have a look at this diagram here if it was to remain at 2400 no matter what your aircraft weighed it would actually the forward limit would look like that it would go all the way up there and this is just a graph of kilograms versus moment index units now an index unit is 10,000 kilogram meters now let me do a little bit of maths just so that you understand this 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 is kind of boring but it's really important to understand so try and switch your brain onto this and just watch the calculations for a sec if we pick any point along the front of this graph here it's going to be a multiple of 2400 and divided by 10,000 to come out with these numbers down here. So what? So let's pick this one here down here first of all, 2000. So if we go 2000 times 2400, that's going to give us a number in the millions. It's going to be 4800. So if we divide that by 10,000, that's going to give us 480. And if you have a look here, 450, 460, 470, 480. That is correct. Okay, so if we pick any of those other points along there, like say, let's just go with, well, let's go with the top point where the graph actually changes at 2360 kilos. Now, how do I know that that's where it changes? Because if we go to our echo loading chart instructions, it tells us that the center of gravity range, okay, um, up to a point of 2360 kilos or less, right? is between 2400 millimeters and 2600 in other words the forward limit is that and the rear limit is that however once we go above 2360 kilos it changes now so that we can work out what that change is they actually give us the range right up the top at 2950 so if we go back to this diagram sorry wrong one if we go back to this diagram here 2950 is way up here and they're the two points that they've given us in your instructions in other words when you're at 2950 your limits are between 2560 and 2680 if we pick 2680 right we'll just flick over there for a sec and we'll just do a little bit of maths on that so in other words there's 2680 millimeters so if we just do the maths on that, I've got to find my calculator. 2680 times 2950 equals 
7,906,000, which will work out to be 790.6, which will be 791 index units, because when we divide that by 10,000, I think 790, so here's 750, 760, 770, 780, 790, and as you can see, that's the back limit. So it's just straight maths. This graph is straight maths. However, here lies the problem. At that point at 2360 kilos, everything above that, we need to start having our center of gravity moving slightly, our forward limit moving slightly back. We don't necessarily need our center of gravity moving back unless it's on the forward limit. If it's back here, we don't need it to move back. But if it's out here near the 2400 millimeters, well then yes, we need it to move back behind this line here. So it's a factor of 0 0.27. Now the way we work that out is this maths down here. What we do is we grab, uh, we grab the x2 minus x1. So we're looking at our x versus our y slope. So we go over x2 minus our x1. So our x2 is um, 2560 minus 2400. So remember they told us that was 2560 and that is 2400. Okay. And then our weights were 2950, which is this weight up here, and versus our weight, which was 2360, which is there. Okay, so what it would be easier if we had millimeters written along here, but we don't. We have index units. So one of those numbers is index units and one is weight. So this one here is the weight, and this one here is index units or millimeters. It doesn't really matter, but that's how we have to work it out. And when we work that out, it's 160 over 590, which equals 0.27. And what that means is as we go up here, we need to grab this point here which is 2400 millimeters and we need to say okay well as we go up in weight difference in weight times 0 0.27 is now our new datum okay so in other words as we go up say 100 kilos 100 times 0.27 is 27 kilos right or sorry, 27 millimeters. So what that means is, is if we go back to our aircraft here, what it means is as we go up 100 kilos, if our weight, uh, if our center of gravity was sitting on the 240, uh, 2400 millimeter line, as we got 100 kilos, it would need to remain legal and safe. It would need to move back 27 millimeters. So it'd have to go back to 2427. So if we go back to our diagram again for a sec, as we go up, say, let's go up about 300 kilos. So that's going to go up to about 2660, which would be there. Okay. So 300 times 0.27. It's going to be three times that amount, but we'll do the maths properly. 300 times 0.27. It's going to have to go back 81 millimeters. So it's now going to be 2,400 plus 81 millimeters, 2,481 millimeters. So if we go back to our aircraft, we've gone up 300 kilos now. It's going to be probably about, you know, somewhere around about there, 2,481 to remain safe. And eventually, when we get right up to our maximum takeoff weight on this, of 2950 then that point is going to be uh, 2560 millimeters and then if we go over to our aircraft here we can confirm that there's the, our forward limit it, the very furthest part back of our forward limit is 2560 millimeters which is that point right there so the reason you need to know this is because CASA can give you these questions where they, they tell you to uh, do a weight shift or a weight add and you might want to graph it. CASA might give you two answers that are very close together. And if they do that, 
and you graph it and you just can't pick an, an honest answer because your graph appears to be you know halfway between the two or the two answers are very close together and you just can't decide which one's right if you know the maths behind this you can then pick a point either side of that and start testing those points so then it would be just a two-step process we'd use this formula back here that we were using down here uh, sorry this one here to find the forward limit at any particular weight and then we'd use our moment index formula which I think I've got over here to work out is it in front of or behind the weight limit what you'd want to do is you want to tally up your um, your index units or your your uh, kilogram per millimeters divide them by the weight that they gave you plus the new weight that you had to add so in other words by your total weight which will be your new weight well let's call that your new weight and that's going to give you a location and when you have that you can compare that to what is the weight limit what is where should you can use this formula to work out where should that forward limit be and if it's at if the forward limit at, at the same weight uh, is meant to be say 2481 and you've worked it out that the way you now have it loaded it's 2500 then you're behind the forward limit and as long as you're in front of the aft limit which is 2680 and it is always 2680 you're okay what I really want you to focus on in, in this video is just knowing these limits because if you know these limits and you know how they work then it's very very easy to be able to work out with echo um, you know, whether you're in trouble or not and which which limitation you're in trouble with and and by how much does that adjust the further you go up so remember up until that point 23600 kilos 23000 sorry 2360 kilos it's 2400 millimeters the aft limit is always 2680 these points here there and there and that point there are all described in your echo loading chart rules just flip back the movement of this half limit back is 0.27 times by how far we go up there okay so remember if we go up 300 kilos it's 300 times that is how many millimeters we're going to add to 2400 in other words if we flick back to our aircraft diagram as we go up that previous chart it's, it's going to when we times it by uh, 0.27 it's going to tell us how many millimeters we need to move back from that red line there so here's a classic type of question they might give you where you need this type of information and you can just graph it out but knowing the maths which I just showed you is massively going to help you so they give you like a, a weight and an amount of index units and then they say which of the following um, is you know the amount of weight that you need to move now if you graphed it out and you got your answer and it went smack bang on one and that's fine that's all you need to do if you graphed it out and your graph result showed right on about a hundred and, and maybe a hundred and two and they're saying what's the closest answer then what you would need to do is go and use that maths in those formulas I just showed you be able to try and work out which one you're closest to and so you might test like say 102 and 98 or you might test 104 and 96 and see which direction is getting closer and then that would point you as to which answer you need to go for i'm matt from pilot practice exams and if you want any help with uh you know passing your practice exams head on over to pilotpracticeexams.com try our free exams first and then if you like it jump on in and join up and if you like these videos please give us a thumbs up um, and also you know hit that red subscribe button and that'll make sure that you don't miss out on any of the new content that we add